Hello fellow developers, my name is Matt Rabel, and I'm a developer advocate at Okta. Today I'd like to build an application with you and show you how to create a microservices architecture with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud, and we'll be building a service that allows you to filter out good beers from bad beers. It's a personal passion of mine, I always like the good beers, I'm from Colorado. So let's get started. The script I'm going to use for this tutorial is already in a blog post on the Okta developer blog. If you search for microbrews, you'll find it here. You'll see it's from June 15th, 2017. And so you might think that's old, but good news, I recently updated this for Spring Boot 2 and everything should be up to date. The blog post starts about going through the history of microservices, why or why you shouldn't use them, and uh, I'm going to basically skip over that and just show you the code. But it is important for you to consider whether you really need microservices because a lot of times it's about scaling teams, not about actually scaling technology. So it says to create a Eureka service. A Eureka service is basically a discovery mechanism that your microservices can register with, and so you need to have that up and running so they can basically talk to each other. So it says here to create a Spring Boot Microservices example directory. I'm just going to go ahead and call it apps since that's a little easier to do. And then you'll notice here it says go to start.spring.io, enter Eureka service as an artifact name, and select Re Eureka service as a dependency. So I can do that, but at the same time what I like is that they have an API. So if you went HTTP start.spring.io, you'll see what that API looks like. So you can see all the different dependencies that are available. And of course you could say, okay, what's uh, what's JPA called? And I'll show you that's called data JPA, right? So then if you want to actually download and extract from the .zip endpoint, then you can basically create an application very easily using the REST API. So I've created aliases to do that. If I show you my Eureka server alias, you can see this is what it looks like. It goes and grabs um, a Eureka service app with that dependency of cloud Eureka server and extracts it to a Eureka dash service base directory and then untars it and so everything just works. So um, we can see the end of apps and then Eureka service and I'll go ahead and create all that for us. Um, the next app we need to create is a beer catalog service. So the beer catalog service is going to be a microservice backend that has a list of beers and it's very dumb and it just has those beers in it, and that's that's about it. So that alias has a number of more dependencies. It's got Actuator, Cloud Eureka for Discovery, JPA, H2, Data Rest, Web, DevTools, and Longbox. And we'll put it in a beer catalog service directory. So go ahead and create that one. And then the last one we're going to create is an edge service. And you might think of this as like a gateway, which basically is the front end for all your back end microservices. And this will delegate to those back end microservices. And in a later tutorial, I'll show how to actually lock those down with OAuth and JWTs. But in this example, I'm not going to add any security. And this edge service is merely going to talk to the beer catalog service, get the list of beers that it provides, and then filter out the ones that aren't so great. So you get a good beer service. So this has a similar alias, edge service. And you can see in this one we're going to use Cloud Eureka for discovery. Cloud Fane, what that allows us to do is, is actually talk to the, uh, the downstream microservices. Zool will allow us to route to microservices if we actually don't want to do anything fancy and we just want to, you know, proxy some URLs down to other URLs. Um, data rest. Web Cloud Hystrix. Hystrix will allow us to do fallback methods and make our architecture a little more robust. And then Lombok. And we'll put that all in an edge service directory. So run that one. And then I'll open up IntelliJ to do all the work to basically add the code and make all these talk to each other. So while that's opening up, you can see that the first thing we need to do in the Eureka service is modify the application.properties to set a server port, Spring Boot uses 8080 by default, so we want to change that to the recommended de facto standard for Eureka, which is 8761. 
and then we'll set Eureka not to register with itself since the default is true when that's found in the class path. So if we look for application.properties, you'll see here that we do have one. Put those in there. Let me make sure I'm using the right font size for this. Search for font. I'm going to change this to screencast so it's a little bigger, a little easier to see. So now you can see that a little better. We'll put this on the left. Put this guy on the right. All right, now here we go. So once you've done that, the other thing you need to do is just say, hey, enable Eureka server. So this is going to be in, oops, wrong one. Uh, Eureka. Set up our SDK. Java 8. And then the spring people like tabs. I like spaces. So there we are. And then we could start up the registry right now and be able to see everything. So if we do that in terminal, cd eureka and spring boot run. So now if we go to 8761, you'll see what the UI looks like and there's no applications registered. So now we'll create a beer catalog service. We already created that. These are the dependencies, like I said earlier. And we're going to start with a beer entity. So we'll find the beer catalog service application.java. And we'll go ahead and add an entity. So the reason why nothing's resolving and it actually doesn't, you know, say right here that this is a Java class is because I haven't added these as Maven projects. So I can go in here and add that Eureka service. Go and add the beer catalog service. And then add the edge service. You might remember when I opened this project in IntelliJ, I used idea space dot. That's from IntelliJ's command line runner or launcher that you can install using tools command line launcher. And so now that I've configured everything, it recognizes a Java project. I can go ahead and uh, delete the beer entity and recreate it. To create it, I'm using live templates. So you'll notice all I have to do is type in boot dash entity lombok and then it fills in the class and that's because I pre-recorded these um, so all I'd have to do is type in like the entity name and so under preferences live templates is where you can find live templates that IntelliJ provides as well as add your own so it's under the, the user area and you'll see I have boot entity lombok so I put those variables in there and that's how you can create your own it's a pretty handy feature so now that we have the beer we can go ahead and create a beer repository and that extends JPA repository which allows you to do crud on the entity create read update and delete and I'll also add a repository rest resource annotation that takes the endpoints and exposes them, so you could do CRUD from a HTTP client. And lastly, I'll create a beer initializer, or command line runner, that will populate the database with a sample list of beers. So these are the top beers I found on beeradvocate.com. Of course, you could plug in some different ones if you wanted to see um, some different names. Now we'll run this application. 
and you can see the beer names are printed out just as we suspected so put them in a database and we were able to use our repository to fetch them and print them out so now you'll want to give your application a name for Eureka so server port 8080 you could remove that if you wanted since it's the default and spring application name and that's just so it shows up in Eureka with that name see it right now it's got the unknown name so after restarting this then we'll see beer catalog service as the name so that's all working as expected exposing those endpoints with repository rest resource allows you to hit the endpoints with something like HTTP which is similar to curl HTTP IE so you can go to 8080 slash beers and you'll see that whole list of how to OS URLs and all the uh, various beer names. So the last thing you'll want to do with this service is enable discovery client. Now you'll notice it did register with Eureka without this command and or without this annotation. So from the research I've done online, it just it appears to be a best practice to enable it, and uh, everything will work together better if you have that on there. So it prevents bad things from happening. The last thing you'll want to do is create an edge service or modify the existing edge service that you created. First of all, to run it on 8081 and to have an application name of edge service. So find the application.properties for the edge service and copy those values in there, or type them in there, however you like. And then you'll want to enable Fain, Hystrix, and registration with the Eureka server. So there's a bunch of annotations that Spring Boot provides for that in Spring Cloud. So add these to your Edge service application. And then you'll create a beer DTO just to basically hold the name that we're going to bring back. So you can do that with a data object from Lombok. Basically provides those getters and setters and two string and all that for you. And then you'll create a beer client interface that basically leverages Thane to talk to that downstream beer catalog service. And then you'll create a Good beer API adapter rest controller because we like long class names. And this one will basically use that beer client to read the beers, get the content, stream them, and filter out the ones that aren't great, and then collect and return that list of just the good beers. And the get name is highlighted in red there just because I don't have the Lombok plugin installed for IntelliJ so as long as you're running the application from the command line with Maven shouldn't be an issue if you do want to adjust your ID you can install Lombok or the Lombok plugin and refresh Eureka and now you can see it's registered with Eureka and so we should be able to hit the 8081 good beers endpoint in a browser if I can type it right And there we are, a nice, easy, consumable list of plain old good beers. So one of the things that Spring Cloud provides with Hystrix is the ability to actually, you know, have data that doesn't return a 500 error. So if we shut down the beer catalog server and try to get to it after it's shut down, you'll notice we get a 500 error. So with Hystrix, what we can do is we can define a fallback method. And that fallback method will allow you to return default data instead of a 500 error. So 200 is always better than 500. So to do that, you can go into the GoodBeer API adapter rest controller and add a Hystrix, Hystrix command fallback and point to the fallback method. So in this case, we're just going to return an empty array list. Um, you could obviously can a few good beer names in here as well. 
and uh, your clients wouldn't die. They wouldn't get a 500 error. They'd get a 200 error, which is obviously a lot better. So restart the edge service application since that's where we made the change. Now when I refresh my browser, it's just an empty array list. And so we could restart the beer catalog service. And once that's up and running again, then we'll, we'll actually get that list of beers returned. So this takes anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds in my experience. Doesn't work very well for demos because you're just continually, continually refreshing and refreshing and refreshing your browser until you get the actual list of names. So you've built a microservices architecture now that has built-in resiliency and failover, but there's no client. So I always like to add a client. I prefer Angular, um, but I also dabble in React. And with, uh, with these instructions here, you can see that you can basically clone the client from a previous tutorial and go ahead and import that or copy the, the client directory into your project. So the easiest way to do that is actually not using GitHub. Um, it's using SVN. There's a there's a command. Um, GitHub actually supports SVN, so you can use SVN export and export a single directory onto your or into your actual project. So I'm going to grab this link here and uh, figure out the right URL. It's basically, leave it. You put trunk on the end and then client and so I can take that and do SVN checkout just for that client directory and it'll put that right into my apps directory and into my project so the first thing when you you know clone an angular project or any project that uses npm is you have to run npm install while that's running in the background we can look at the changes that you'll want to make or the changes that I'll make in this project. Basically I'm changing from using port 8080 to 8081 since that's where our edge service is. And the first time I try that it's actually going to fail because it's making a cross origin request. So in edge service application you can allow cross origin requests from any client by adding this cross origin annotation. then restart the edge service then I'll change the beer service to talk to 8081 save that file now I can run npm start to actually start the client that will talk to the edge service And once that's done compiling, you can open up localhost 4200, and you should see the list of beers in there. There we go. If you followed along, congratulations on creating a robust microservices architecture. You can deploy this to Cloud Foundry if you want. You just have to add some application-cloud.properties files that basically use Cloud Foundry's uh, Eureka registry instead of the one you created and so to make that easy um, I actually went ahead and created a deploy.sh script that automates everything so I had some help from this or help creating this from Josh Long and it basically just builds all the different projects and pushes them to Cloud Foundry and configures them to talk to each other. So if you want to see a video where Josh actually live coded all of this from DevOx France in 2017, you can. And the source code for this is all on GitHub under Spring Boot Microservices Example under the Okta Developer Org. I hope you've enjoyed yourself watching this video and learned a great deal about how to create microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud.